Okay, first of all, it gives me an absolute great privilege and honour to welcome you to our partnership evenings. Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all parents, carers, community members for their tremendous support over what has been a really difficult um, six months. Um, Covid and lockdown has you know, hit us all extremely hard um, in terms of the continuity for our students, in terms of um, you know, continuity of teaching and learning and it has absolutely been a wonderful experience coming back to school and opening the doors again to see our, our pupils. We really, really have missed them. And, you know, a massive thank you to yourselves as parents for all your continued support. You know, we've kept in touch um, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes uh, monthly, just to make sure that, you know, in terms of uh, education and continuity of learning and in terms of pastoral care guidance and support, your, your son or daughter um, has, been, has been looked after over these uh, past few months. But we're back now, it's September and we're looking forward, although under very different and difficult circumstances, to continuing that quality of education for all our students in year 7 right through to year 11 and we promise to give them the very, very best of opportunities. So I hope today as we go through the different slides and the different presentations that there is a wealth of knowledge that you'll take from the, to today's partnership evening and if there are any questions or concerns please do not hesitate but to get back in touch with the year leaders for each specific year group um, and we will only be too happy to help. Thank you again for your continued support and I hope you find the information useful. Hello, welcome to the Year 8 Parent Partnership presentation. My name is Mr Lewis and I'm the SLT Link for Year 8. I'm Mrs Jones and I'm the Head of Year for Year 8. And I'm Mrs Leach, the Pastoral Lead for Year 8. So our roles currently um, are to deal with any student issue issues. So I will be the first port call when you ring in. Um, we deal with behaviour, rewards, attendance, um, and any contact or meetings with parents um, and we also deal with the attainment and progress for students throughout the year group. Any concerns that parents or students have will come via myself and Mrs Jones. Um, so currently under the Covid restrictions our day has changed slightly um, and we are now running that we expect students here from 8.50 um, with a 9 o'clock start and the school does finish at 3.35 for the year eights. Detentions are still on the same day and will run for an hour after school, so therefore that would be a 4.35 finish. Texts still go out in the same way as they have done previously, um, that they go out in the afternoon so parents are made aware of that. Um, with regard to uniform, we do expect full uniform, ties, Masks are now an essential piece of uniform which students do need to have with them every single day. We expect one pair of earrings, school shoes which have to be leather and not trainers, unless of course they're on a PE day when they would have the trainers on with the rest of the PE kit. Also, we expect them to have the correct equipment um, every single day. We do have some in school what we can supply, but we do expect students to take responsibility for this and bring it in every day with them. Um, we do run rewards, um, as you can see on there we're doing the vouchers, emails, postcards, reward slips and the teacher nominations as standard. Trips at the moment due to Covid are in discussions and we're hoping that they'll be coming back but at the moment we're on hold with those. Behaviour, um, if there's an incident in class the student when they go into the next lesson does get a fresh start every single lesson. Um, Sanctions are dealt with in private and in a manner that suits the school, parents and the child in the best way and will be looked into fairly. Um, students are then given time to reflect and look at what they did and how they can address issues in the coming future so that they don't repeat the same behaviours in class. And also there will be same day detentions, 
Parents will be contacted in the hope that we can do meetings the same day or as soon as possible so that the issues relating to the poor behaviour um, that led to the sanction can be rectified as soon as possible so we can get back to the fresh start of the lesson. With regards to attendance, so my whole school responsibility is attendance across the whole academy. Obviously, so I've got you know good interest, certainly with, with the year eights in particular, to make sure that we have the best attending year group. Um, whilst we're sympathetic, obviously, with what's been going on over the last few months uh, during the pandemic, um, obviously, what we do need to see is students back into the academy as frequently as possible, um, following the government advice, um, because once we know, once they're in school, they will learn um, the, the correlation between learning once they're in and attending school with their outcomes. Obviously, there's, there's a great link there. We also know our students are safe and secure, and we look after them throughout the day, and obviously, return home at the end of each day. What you could probably just make out there is the attendance triangle and in terms of that link in terms of underachievement. So, so the more students are off school, obviously, the, the, um, the, the more they're going to underachieve as time goes on. But as I said, with this uh, pandemic that we, we deal with, we are sympathetic. Please work with us. Please communicate with myself and Mr. Leach and, and Ms. Jones so that we can obviously find a suitable arrangement to make sure students attend as frequently as possible. Each year group um, has a charity that they work towards and that for year eight it is the food bank at Alden this year. Um, so students will be made aware of that and they will be doing work relating to the food bank um, charity. But notifications will also be coming out to parents when we need input from yourselves and maybe donations. But these are some of the things that um, we'll be looking at and the areas within the food bank that the students will be learning about and finding out relevant details for. I'm just going to give you some key messages from our core departments about some of the expectations around the work, the homework and the learning that will be going on in the classrooms. So the English department would like you to know that they'll be sent a book club home um, in which they're expected to complete the task weekly. They're also expected to do 20 minutes of reading and for you to sign in the plan to show that reading has taken place. It's something that the English department will be monitoring um, throughout. So they're also expected to have an English book to be bringing a reading book to every single lesson. So they'll have this out on the desk with the planners every lesson, whether it be English, Maths or Science. The Maths department are using Hegarty for their homework. Um, there's some instructions on the, the PowerPoint that you can look at afterwards if they've forgotten the password. They need to click the button and reset it, and by the next day, the password will be reset so they can access the homework again. Pupils will be sent two to three tasks a week, taking about half an hour in duration to complete. They need to remember the equipment for every lesson. It's really important to bring the science, scientific calculator, the black pen, green pen, rubber, ruler, and a pencil. Um, and if possible, also a protractor as well, especially in these times when we can't lend out equipment. Science, um, they'll be using Senka Learn to complete homework, so they'll be given instructions. The instructions will be sent home and they will be written in the planner. Um, they have knowledge organisers so they take part in a quiz every two weeks. It would be helpful if at home you could quiz them on some of the keywords or key concepts they've been learning about. Again, they should be bringing these home for you to have a look at. Um, throughout the year, they study these big ideas and we link to a lot of careers as well to the science um, in the science department. Finally, I've included PE because there's a few changes this year. The PE kit has remained the same. However, there are some changes to um, some of the kit. So I know the tracksuit bottoms need to be plain and navy, or the ones with the school logo on. And if it is a PE day pupils, there are some adapted, adapted routines. So pupils will be asked to come to school with the PE kit with the blazer on. Now we're asked that they've still got the pencil case, planner and equipment, and they're able to transfer all the things that they need into the bag or the pockets when they have got a PE day. So it's the same other key information, no jewellery in PE, hair needs to be tied back, they can't wear the school shoes, no chain on which is a school rule, and we can't wear leggings as well for PE, it must be the full kit. 
Okay, so that's the end of our short presentation. Um, and it's not the usual way that we'd like to do these uh, these evenings, where we would actually share you come in to meet us personally. Uh, but obviously, we try to adapt what we can uh, with the current climates. Um, at least you get to see our faces um, and our names. You'll see who we are. And if there's any issues throughout the year, please, please, please contact us in the first instance. I'm myself, Mr. Lewis, Ms. Leach, or Ms. Jones for further information and support. Thank you for listening. Good evening, my name is Mr. Ogden, I'm the Assistant Teacher in Charge of Climate, Culture, uh, Behaviour and Expectations. I'm going to take you through a bit of a PowerPoint presentation today. Uh, I know some of it might not be clear on the camera, but we'll put that on the website for your perusal and obviously the behaviour policies on there. So first of all, we're just looking at our expectations. Uh, we expect every young person to arrive promptly for school. Uh, I know there's various bubble start times at the moment, starting from 8.30, but we do expect young people to be there and prompt on time. Uh, every morning. To be fully equipped for lessons at all time, which means if they've got PE, they have the PE kit. If they've got the lessons, uh, the equipment for the lessons, they must have a pen, pencil, a green pen for underlining, ruler, your mass equipment, your pro projector, and your planners, which are a working document for every lesson. To wear full school uniform at all times, uh, that includes school shoes, uh, skirts to be at the correct length with the Royal and Cronton logo. If we are in PE kit in these changing times where young people are coming in PE kit that they do have the Ryder Cronton shorts, the Ryder Cronton football socks, or they are playing blue uh, equipment. To show respect for self and others, and that goes for all staff, visitors and students, we expect staff to speak to students with respect, students to speak with students with respect, hold doors, be polite, don't drop litter, and that's something that we, we really expect and we really drive and encourage our young people to be like, to res respond positive and politely to all instructions from members of staff. At times young people will be asked to do things that, that necessarily they, they, they don't agree with but we expect them to respond positively and that those instructions will always be uh, for the good of the learning for the whole group and that individual. To work to the best of ability at all times, we're in a brand new building to respect property, to make sure that when we're travelling down corridors that we don't touch the walls, you know, we, we look after doors, we make sure that we pick up litter, we don't graffiti on desks and to encourage that community sense of team, it's like their home away from home to make sure that we respect the building and everybody in it. To so uphold the expectations within the local and wider community, you know, we're very, very proud of our uniform and we're proud of our young people. So when they're travelling to and from school, that they're representing you as parent and carers and in our uniform they're representing those honesty, that excellence and our modelling excellence out in the community. Uh, we do have a behaviour policy that long, runs alongside all these expectations to make sure that young people are employable you know, and, and they, they do understand that wherever we go through life there will be rules and there will be consequences if you step outside of those, so well, I'll take you through those in a second. Just a quick example of the uniform, the, you know, skirts must be knee length with the right of Cronson logo, a black shirt, black socks, they must have uh, a black school shoe, a leather school shoe with no bright logos or different colours on it. Hair must be a correct colour, a uh, natural colour and no shade patterns in it. And the PE kit is modelled that's on there as well. We, have, we operate something called Q, which is coach, uniform and equipment. They're monitored every day during lessons. Uh, we expect our young people to have the shirts tucked in, to have the blades on and corridors. They get three opportunities to make sure that's right. Uh, they have a cue card in the, in the planner. If the one of those expectations aren't met, there is a staff signature on. Three signatures will lead to a consequence. But likewise, if there's no signatures on that, the young people get to put those into a prize draw where they get vouchers for doing the right things and, and displaying that corporate image, which again is pre preparing them and ready for that world of work. Basic expectations that we expect in and around the academy. So we, anywhere young people enter the building, we expect them to take the coats off and either put them in the bag or under their arms so they're only wearing the school uniform in and around the, the, the academy. Appropriate school footwear, there's no trainers allowed at all within school. Skirt length, as we discussed before, is knee length. Our blazers have to be worn at all times. Once in classrooms, if the young people are hot and they want to take the blazers off, they ask the member of staff permission to it will always be granted that, but when we're travelling in between lessons and at break times, blazers are to be worn. School tie has to be worn, they're separate colours for different year groups to give them their identity. Hair is a natural colour, 
We know what the school equipment is. We provided that as a school. We expect parent carers, home to support that to ensure that learning can take place. And under no circumstances, there are no false nails or nail varnish to be allowed in school. Just take you through the behaviour system. If young people make the right decisions and they put the learning first and they follow the instructions, that this will never ever apply to them. They will only ever be rewarded in school. But if you know, we're very, very big on that teachers have to teach and learners have the right to learn and nobody in this school has the right to stop another young person or a group of young people learning and if that is the case then we do operate a C1 to a C4 behaviour system. C1 is a warning with an instruction uh, and an expectation of what the young person has done wrong, some take up time for them to improve. Uh, again for a C2 that's in effect a final warning. Uh, to allow that, that young person to focus and put the learning first. If they reach the next stage, so they're disrupting learning or there's a serious one off incident, there is something called a C3 removal, which that young person will then be exited from lesson and will be educated in timeout within their year bubble, uh, at which point that will be investigated by the year team. Depending on the seriousness of that, they might go then back into their lesson and continue for the day, or they might be taken out and educated in a period of reflection. Uh, parents will always be contacted uh, and most of the time there will be a phone call to have that discussion with parents about working together as a team to make sure that our young people are, are modelling what's done at home and they put the learning first in our lessons. C4s are a, a serious incident uh, which are a serious breach of the behaviour policy and they can be dealt with either internal exclusion, a period of learning at another school or in extreme circumstances uh, an exclusion from the school a fixed term. Okay, detentions, uh, if a young person is removed for disrupting learning or, or other areas of a C3, then they will operate a detention after school that day. Uh, the detention will be for a period of an hour. If a young person occurs more than one C3 in a day, that can equate to a, an SLT detention, which is an hour and a half. Detention cut-off point for the same day detentions is 2 o'clock. You'll receive a text message that will be sent home to notify that your young person will be in detention that night. This, this strict rules in that they will be in their certain bubble detentions across their bubble within school. They have to be sat up in silence and if they've got homework they can do their homework otherwise we will provide work for them to complete. Can you skip that please? Okay just moving on to your mobile phones just to make it sure to everyone. We know that every young person in this academy will have a mobile phone and we understand as parent or carers that it's essential for young people to have mobile phones travelling to and from the academy for safety to get in touch with them. But as soon as they enter our, our doors, we expect that phone to be turned off, switched off, zipped in a blazer pocket or placed in the bag. Uh, as we've touched on before, the reason for that is that we expect when we're in school for them to develop the manners, to develop the social. We don't want them texting on phones, but we also want them no distractions from the learning. We expect every young person to maximise that learning time and put the learning first. If a young person does get the phone out, it will be confiscated, it's held in the school safe and we will contact you for a convenient time for you to come and collect that. Punctuality, again the most important part of lessons at times are that introduction uh, and that beginning which allows people to understand their outcomes and objectives and the success criteria about where they're going in that lesson. Every young person to get anywhere within this building within three minutes, but we do have a cut off time of five minutes. If you're late for school by five minutes, or if you're late for a lesson by five minutes because they've not been uh, proactive enough on the corridors of getting to where they should be, that we do allocate a late mark, which will also allocate a late detention, which is an hour after school that day. Rewards. We operate uh, quite a fast reward system from R1 all the way to R5. Every student has the opportunity uh, to meet the folks of the week, whether that be listen to the person who's talking uh, or meeting that criteria they get an R1 every lesson. Uh, students are able to get an R2 which is going above and beyond, an excellent piece of homework, uh, being a great community citizen and then there's also students at start of the week which are voted through by members of staff. So every member of staff will put through somebody who's gone above and beyond or made uh, you know, the correct amount of effort or gone, gone out of their way to show improvement on work or community or manners or honesty, excellence, aspiration and they will get a certificate every week. Uh, 
moving forward uh, when we will be allowed which will hopefully be sooner rather than later we also offer, offer our fives and, and rewards trips to various places thank you very much Okay, so the way that we're doing Key Stage 3 assessment is actually going to change this year. The reasons for that are that our purpose for assessment is slightly different. We'd like to gain an understanding of how well the students have accessed and learned the curriculums that we've been designing over the past 18 months. We want to ensure that subsequent planning capitalises on what learners know and we are aware that there might be some gaps in knowledge, so part of our assessment at Key Stage 3 is to unpick any gaps from the lockdown. And we want to inform students of their own learning journeys with language that is uh, accessible and easily shared between ourselves, you as parents and the students. And that includes in, um, information that allows them to self-regulate and to actively seek support on their own. In order to do this, we've created the ladder of success. So the information that you receive from school will have a keyword. So our keywords for each rung on the ladder are establishing, developing, securing, mastering and excelling. So we'll start with establishing, which means the student shows some simple signs of accessing our curriculum. And that goes up to the top with excelling. The student is able to show a thorough and detailed understanding of the curriculum. So one of the things that we've done differently this year is instead of taking into account one exam at the end of half term, is to take in all of the assessment that we do at Key Stage 3. And we know that your students work hard in classes and our teachers work hard to constantly assess where there are any gaps. And we do that through pre-assessment, which is pre, uh, low stakes pre-planned tests. So quizzes, multiple choice questions and question and answer sessions. We do it through regular formative assessments, so lots of low stakes testing that's spaced out over time. So there's no stress and anxiety, we encourage making mistakes and we learn to unpick those mistakes together. We do this through disciplinary tasks, so for example in PE this might be a practical task that is assessed as a group. And then all of this assessment comes together to give us a cumulative summative exam score, which I'll go through in a second. And this means that we take the structural knowledge that your students learn all through that year and we turn it into a percentage. So for each rung of the ladder, you'll see that there is a, an attached percentage. So if your cumulative exam score for the year in that subject comes in at 39% or below, your student will be on the establishing rung. And what we hope to see is that students gradually progress through each rung as the year goes on. This can mean that in year seven, a student might be at securing by the time that they leave year seven, and they could go down to develop in the year after, that's absolutely fine. What we're using this ladder is to judge within one year how successful the student has been at learning that curriculum for that subject. What I would just add is for each of these assessments, it's a disciplinary knowledge. So that means that it's subject specific knowledge. Your child might be exceptional in English, but struggling maths. And what we want to make sure is that we're able to identify those gaps. So we, with you as partners, can address them as soon as possible. If you do have any questions about the reports that you receive or any of the assessment that we do at Brighton and Crompton, please feel free to get in touch through your year leads and we'll address any issues you've got through uh, Ed, my Ed as well. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Miss Jacob and I'm going to talk to you about how as an academy we want to improve communications with you, the parents. We know that sometimes emails may get stuck in the junk boxes, maybe sometimes texts don't get through. So what we really need is your help and support in downloading the Maya app. It's really, really simple and easy to do, but what it means is that you will be constantly updated on how your child is doing, what their attendance is and what their behaviour is. So, the positives to this app are it allows your information to keep up to date with what's going on we will send all messages to you via my ad it lets you look at key information for your students for your children and what they are doing and how they are behaving it also means that you will get free messages to school but also from school so but also you can send us messages and they will be picked up so what we do, and this is what it will look like, it will give you an attendance. So, for example, this student here has come to 95%, and that's uploaded and updated every single day. 
it will tell you about all the forms that need to be filled in and all the um, parental student questionnaires that we need to support on, but also how your child is doing because every lesson they get given a grade and that will be updated so you can see again how well they're doing and have those conversations with them. So to get this MyEd app it's really simple, you go to your app store, you download the MyEd app, you search for Royton and Crompton, you enter your contact details and it's as simple as that. So please help us to improve our communications. Please download the MyEd form, or sorry, the MyEd app, and let's make sure that our communication lines are really good, up and running, and are open at all times. Okay, so just to say, finally, Thank you for you know, spending the time this evening to go through each of the presentations. I hope you found all the information useful and um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to keep in touch. This is your school, it's the school and you know that we promise to deliver a quality of education and enriching experiences for your son and daughter and therefore your, your voice does count so please stay in touch and as I said earlier in, uh, earlier in the presentation contact heads of year or the senior link for each year group and we will only be too happy to help. Thank you.